Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us once again. This is our um, next African Composers interview. And our guest for today is Abel Obaje. Abel, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Fantastic. Um, so let us just get right into it. Oh, and by the way, let me apologize to our audience. I did put up a message on Facebook. We are having to start quite late today because of some technical issues that we had earlier. But thank you very much for those of you who choose to join us and watch us live and those who will join who will watch the interview later. Thanks for, for your patience. So thank you again, Abel. Um, so get right into it. Tell us about yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Abel Obaje. I am from Kogi State. Um, they call it Middle Coast, but then I think it's, I don't know whether it's North Central. We are the Kala speaking uh, people of that um, area. I am a graduate of uh, music, uh, administration management, and political science. So I have these three things lined up. And uh, I'm someone who has a deep passion for music. And it's something that is, I don't want to say inborn, but it would be like I am over exaggerated. I think it's something I grew up, something I've grown to love from the beginning. So I'm not surprised at the interest I have in it. And it's been wonderful. And uh, that's what has kept me going. Mm, I am third from a family of six. My dad was a uh, officer. That's about it. Maybe as we could talk about other um, details will unfold. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're having some technical difficulties. So some of the points you made well, did not come across clearly to me. So I don't okay. really know if they are. As a result, they did not come across clearly to um, to our audience. So you said you are from Kogi State, Nigeria. Yes. Um, you talked about the courses that you studied. I heard political science and music. You said there were three. I didn't really catch everything. There's administration and management too. Okay, so political science, <laughs> administration and management, and music. Yes. So you mean you have three degrees, three university degrees, or? No, two university degrees, one university diploma it's not a degree okay. it's in nigeria when when you don't do did that for four years or there but you do it for two years it's a diploma so okay so higher education a yeah. higher education qualification that's okay, brilliant uh did you say you were the third of five children six actually six children okay mm -hmm. uh, and you talked about your um how you grew in music uh, you said you did not want to say that it was inborn because that will probably make you sound as if you are showing off. Yes. I, I'm trying then, to just make sure that we all hear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's something I it's something that started from childhood. So you know when you grow up in your house, you see a music instrument like the piano. You develop interest touching and touching and touching. It will follow you. That was, that was what happened to me. You know, okay. I did it and I you know started got interested immediately. Okay. Then, you know, you start doing it and then testing, touching, making noise with it. And then it will start making it will, make, it will start sounding nice later. Especially when you see that okay. it can actually make sense out of that thing you've been playing with. All right. So now, um, just to finish off what you said at the beginning, you mentioned your father. I didn't quite understand what you were saying about your father. Can you just repeat that for the Retired military officer. A retired military <laughs> officer. Yes. Okay. All right. Is you are laughing? Why are you laughing about that? <laughs> because the impression people have about um, people like that is that their children are so straight jacketed, no, no fun, nothing. You, you, you get go go to school, come back and put your face straight, and then it will be surprising sometimes to see a military officer's son venturing or doing music or something. I, I, I think I understand where you are coming from uh, when it comes to military um, parents, parents who work for the military. I understand what you are, where you're coming from. Uh, well, I want to, I want to, you've opened up a number of topics that I would like to explore. You studying three and, and gaining three higher education qualifications. Yes. 
were you trying to find out which ones you'd be interested in? Which one came first? Which, what was your main area of interest? How did this come about? Have to be quite different. Okay. Okay. The very first, the very first was um, administration and management. But then my interest was music. So that's the credit I, I give to my dad, my father. If he sees that you are interested in something and you are so into that thing, he goes to support you. So the administrator, he will tell you, I want you to do this, but you want this, that's fine. So after the management thing, I, 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 I had more time for music than what I went to study. So he said, what do you want? You want to do it? You want to, you know? And I said, yes. That was what took me to, to do that. Then the, the last one was his suggestion too. The, I did political, so that was the last degree I did. It was through him. He said, this thing is also good. I've seen this in you because I love politics. I love, I, I got okay. in the, in the country and all that. And he said, go and get a degree in this if you want to. <laughs> so okay. I have a lot in this small head. <laughs> <laughs> well, but then okay. the dominant thing, I discovered that the dominant was actually music because that's the major thing. Okay. Brilliant, brilliant. And you're doing quite well though, in that space. So well done. Yeah. Okay. You well, you did talk about starting early. You were you had some influence from your family. You you talk about how if you if a child sees a piano in the house, start to touch it. Well. That doesn't work for all families, though. Many people grow up with pianos and keyboards. <laughs> you know, some people Absolutely. have instruments gathering dust somewhere in the cupboard. So yeah, yeah. this is Absolutely. what you are telling us. I mean, how, how did it come about? It doesn't happen for everyone. You clearly have a an interest, which you don't want to call inbuilt, but perhaps we can look at it as something that is natural. Yeah. When I grew up, when I when growing up, I saw the piano and it struck a chord in my body. Immediately, the, this direct attraction direct but very right because i became the only one who played eventually family of six so um he, I, I think it's the, the piano found me because you know, i saw it so then it found me told me to come come okay so <laughs> that was an interesting <laughs> conversation i'm sure <laughs> a piano telling you to come over yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so i went and uh, he got me and I started, I ventured and went and you know, went on to try to make something out of it eventually. The others, the others in the family just, uh, just uh, are comfortable with seeing it and, and just touching and moving on. But my, my own interest was more than theirs. Okay. Um, well, that's just really interesting. You talked about starting early. You said when you started to play the piano, um, the sounds started to make sense to you and people around you, I guess, commented on what you were doing. That sounds like, as if that sounds as if you had some encouragement from people around you. Yes. Um, it, initially, I tried to play it. I tried to just touch the keys and buttons and everything around there. And I was so fascinated by the sounds and things like, even though the sounds were not making sense initially at that time. There was somebody who tried to, um, there was an, there was this neighbor I had, there was this neighbor we had, somebody close to us, who had a little knowledge about it. So he just came, I was touching one one buttons, like trying to play the melody of the song, just the melody. On the keys, on the keyboard. Yeah, and then I discovered that that is possible with this. And uh, I know that, I think whatever I set my mind to, I have ended up actually, I've ended up doing that. And I told myself, this thing, can you do it again? Can you do it again? And then by the time he left, coming back the next time, I was also doing that. So I, I think his name is Boniface. I think that person was the first person to actually draw my attention to what the piano can do, that this can be used to create melody. Yeah. Initially, my little mind, my child's mind was that I love the sound. I love the sound and the combination, the white and the black keys. And when he made a song out of it, I was fascinated. And Hooked. Okay. And then I made a lot of a whole lot of songs myself out of try and error, try and all that. You talked about being young. You said a child's mind. How young were you? And and, and apart from then, 
when did you start composing? When did you look at yourself and say, oh my goodness, I'm a composer? Okay, I started the touching of the piano was at age five and six. Was, okay. That but then composing, composing, unofficially, unofficially, I started when I was nine. That thing, I don't call it composition, but then in my adult mind, I saw it as composition. What you recognize did, it now? Yes, yes, yes. What we did then was to, we were laughing at each other and we were saying, this is not a true song. When you compose, we call it a false song. It's not a true song. Oh my God. Like you just say things, gibberish. Just say things and then create, make, make things out of it and do it and people will laugh and all that and all that. We did a church, a friend of mine, we did something like that. There was an existing song. There was an existing song that lack verses. So we use the chorus of the song and start saying things inside it, creating things and then creating melodies. So let me just, sorry, there's, there's some, we're having some problems with the sound coming across okay. from you. So you were saying in church, you and a friend, you picked up a song, an existing song that had a chorus or just a song, but there were no verses. No verses. So you, you, you put we together created. some words. Yes, and we laughed at, people laughed at us and said, where are you people lying? This is not in that song and all that and all that. So we thought we were lying then. But now <laughs> I discovered that we're actually trying to compose to, to do things actually. Then um officially was in 2001. A priest, I am a, of course, you know I'm a Catholic. A priest was living. I don't know that. Sorry, I don't okay, know that. A Catholic, <laughs> You're a Catholic, Catholic. okay. <laughs> I am a Catholic. All right. <laughs> so a priest that I got so fond of, we love that priest so much was transferred, you know. So I started thinking, what what can I do? What can I do? We need to do something for this priest. We're very, we're, we're very, in our young minds, we didn't know what to do. So I said, perhaps I can put together something. Can somebody give me um, some the lyrics, like words to something, something? People just suggested I wrote something down myself. And then I created a song, a farewell song for the priest. And I taught the people, and after singing, the priest gave me money. He <laughs> gave, gave you some money. Oh, God. Yes. The priest okay. gave me money. Then, um, when I started reading, then it was just divine. Like God would just make, make us remember things. It was after learning how to write and read notes, music notes, that I discovered that you can actually preserve your melody using it. So, then we just gather lyrics, words, yeah, and try to. Sometimes you learn it, you practice it, or create melody to it. Sleep over it the next day. You may not remember the total melody, everything you did yesterday, and it will be somehow again. And then we kept on going like that till oh, to get it right. But then learning notes, I could write and keep and get back to it. So that was the very first composition for a priest. And then um, later, I learned how to write. I learned how to write with notes, you know, the staff notation, the musical notation, the music notation, and the rest of them. So I started writing. Incidentally, the second and the third song, too, were for different priests. <laughs> for different priests so, as well. Yeah, okay. Like that. My very first, not the info, not the other one, my very first official song was by priest, second and third were also for priests. So after that, we started writing and started looking at harmony how correct the harmony is, how your chord should go, how this should be. And then we started writing for, for, for competitions, for things, for people you know. We started writing and then that's how we discovered. Then I also have it, um, I don't know, I told people that it's divine, people laugh. I told people sometimes I get, I get songs when I sleep. I, I have no explanation to that myself. Um, even my mind is telling me it's, it's most likely just coincidental or something. Sometimes I wrote a song for a university and the university went to win a competition. That's why I got I woke up at night around 2 a.m. with the melody in my head. And so I people sometimes, you say people, when you tell people, sometimes you go to bed and you wake up with a melody, people laugh. And you once you wrote a composition that you woke up with. Yes. You woke up with around 2 a.m. and you gave it to a university and they went on to win the competition. Yes, that's very true. So, so when I woke up around 2 a.m., I just wrote what is in my head now. Wrote them just very long, but I didn't even know. When I woke up, 
I saw what I wrote and I was shocked. I had no recollection. I yes, I, I didn't recall at all that this melody was ever in my head. Goodness. Okay. So, so I went on to develop it because I put more time in it. That was what, what the one I gave to the person I, I, I they won the company. But then when I tell people, they say you probably went to bed hungry or something. Like, yeah, you went what? <laughs> went to bed hungry. <laughs> Are you oh, hearing? That's why you're hearing, okay. <laughs> so hunger hunger heightens your, your imagination for music. Oh gosh, right. Yeah. Everything you're saying is so interesting to hear you say that when you first started, um, you did not know how to put the music down in the form of notes. So sometimes yeah. you teach a song without notes. You just had the words. And yeah. sometimes by the following day, Let's say you are just trying to get used to it by yourself, the melody, you would have forgotten parts of the melody. It won't be exactly yes, what yeah, it was the day before. Exactly. Those are the that, things. that is so interesting. Does Do you know if you have some compositions like that today that have been learned by choirs across perhaps parts of Nigeria that are not actually written down? Um, the thing, what I did was that I spoiled it eventually when I, when I learned the art of writing. I went back and wrote them well again. Okay. Why so, did you say spoilt it? I was supposed to leave it as it is, you know, um, in that innocent nature. Okay. Yes, <laughs> oh, I see I what you mean. Leave, I was not supposed to touch it at all. Just leave it like that. So I can have a story to, to tell, what to show people. This was but how I... Is... No, no, no. It's, I, 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 this is what I think. I think that backstory still rings, it still stands. Okay. Yes, you have put it down in the form of notes, but I think that backstory is absolutely <laughs> fascinating. It still yeah. stands. It still stands. Yeah. Um, I also noticed something. You keep using the expression we. We said we started composing. We were laughing at ourselves. We did this. We did that. It seems that it seems as if you collaborate a lot. Or are you just somebody who likes to use the expression we as some people do? No, the we there was my childhood. I had a friend who was also um very musically inclined like that his name is vincent his we, name is vincent vincent okay vincent we did that together everything that first song we did in church that had a chorus and then we created verses for it we did that together. like i'll do mine you do his and all that so we're together like that but he didn't go for that with music he, okay yes yeah but then that was like the first major push those were the push we got they, they push the push to continue. Yeah. So okay. then um, every other thing, my composition, how to develop it was um, in this, uh, when I learned the art in school and then in choir, I was in choir. I joined the choir at a very tender age. Just- Around what age? 1988, I, I shouldn't be saying my age. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind then, no, don't worry about it. You joined in around I can tell you when I joined, I can tell you when I joined though. <laughs> It's fine. It's okay. So you okay, joined I at can, very no, 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 fine, fine. I, I joined at age seven. Oh, acquired at the age of seven. Yeah. Right. Then I left. But okay. then my interest was just I didn't join to go and sing. I joined because I love the sound of the drums. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So not not the keyboard. The, then the church I attended had no keyboard, had no piano, nothing. Okay. Yeah. So, but then I had the knowledge of piano. Because I have it in my house. The church doesn't have. So what took me to the choir then was the drum, local instruments and how they play them. So I went, I joined the choir. My interest 100 percent was there. So I joined when I discovered that I was not allowed, I left. Then I came back three years later <laughs> when I was 10. And then I started singing, not even playing the instruments. Singing. singing, okay. You yes. were not allowed to play. The drums, yes. or you were not allowed to introduce a piano at the age of seven. Which is it? The, I the piano was in my house, so I can't even move it from the house. So okay. I didn't, I didn't even know in, in my child's mind. I didn't even at that know, age. Yes. Yes, I didn't know that the piano should be used in the choir. So all I knew then was that uh, the choir people were playing drums. I enjoyed the rhythm. I enjoyed those things, and I want to play those things too. So ah. I, so I joined the choir to play. But then because I was too small, also I was not allowed, you were not to, allowed play. to play the drums. Yeah, the drums. So I, I left. Then I came back two years later, having developed interest in singing and playing the, the, the drums. Okay. Okay, so brilliant. I started singing. So say, after singing, I 
was eventually allowed to play it. Funny enough, I was not taught. I only saw how it was played. I do my rehearsals myself. And I came back and played the drum. And people, they were clapping for me. So I sang and I played, I sang and I played. And so they finally thought of buying a piano, uh, buying, okay. buying a piano in the church. And I was already miles ahead of every other person. So naturally, I started playing in the church. Okay. Like, okay. Um, what was the last thing you said? You started playing in the church at? 1995. 1995. Fantastic. Okay. So... I want to play a video now. Um, I would prefer it if you tell us the title of this piece. It's it's um, if I just read it in in the dialect that I can use, and then you can tell me exactly how it should be pronounced. I read it as E O N E H I E I Z A. Is that correct? Yes, E O N E H I E I Z A. E I Z A. E I Z A. E I Z A. Brilliant. So we are going to play that now, and then we'll continue the interview after after the. Maria, oh Maria, Eu I'm 
Thank you very much um, for coming back, everybody. Thanks. That was a composition by our guest composer, Abel Obaje. Can you give us the name of the composition again, please, if you don't mind? Sorry? Okay, fantastic. Simply means full of grace. Full of grace. Oh, beautiful. Um, tell us something beyond the meaning, the interpretation of the title, tell us something about this composition that we just listened to. Okay. This composition has a very interesting storyline. Um, in 2012, I I lost my immediate younger sister, who is also a, choral, a singer, a very- Your scholar. younger sister? Yes, immediate younger sister. So- Sorry to hear that. I'm really oh, sorry. Thank you very much. And then that was the period that um, entries were welcomed for a uh, forum for the culture of liturgical music. They call it FIM, the festival. Okay, that, that's a well-known um, music festival yeah, in, yeah. That, that's held up uh, across universities in Nigeria where choirs come together to perform. Yes, exactly. So I was approached to do a song, Hail Mary. I was approached to do, I did two songs for that festival that year. So. After losing my sister, after I thought I had gone, I, I recovered from everything and all that, that was when I sat to write the song. And I didn't know that my mood affected the song till when the song was presented at UK. I was close to tears, I was this, I was all that when I heard the song. If you hear the original presentation, how it was presented, I conducted it eventually. Okay. You, 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 because I went back to it later to actually listen and I'll try to observe what people say after listening to this, that the mood was a bit sad. This, they said that without knowing I lost it. So then I now started thinking, is it, I asked the professor, but I started thinking, is it possible for your mood to affect your composition? And I got the shock of my life that it's very possible. I didn't know that, that writing something based on the mood I was in. And that moment, I thought I was writing, I was writing a, a, a song for a bar, and this is what I have, and this is what is coming, this is the idea I have, it should sound prayerful, it should have like deep reverence and all that. And then I used some, some notes, thoughts and all that, that had something to do with the mood I was in. And that so when the song came out and it sounded that way, um, I believed what, what people were told me then. That, ah, this song, is, this song probably did it when you were in very down. Your, your mood was very down. And it was by all means, yes. So I did that song that period. And then the song to it had the highest score in film festival. Because the score was supposed to be over 100. It had almost 100 from all the judges. And uh, it came first at that two thousand and thirteen, held at the uh, University of Lagos. Came first. And, uh, yes, came first. Okay. So, so and uh, I, I started thinking. That was when I now knew. I started thinking it's a possibility. But then, what I was told that scientifically proven was a possibility that your mood affects your writing. So, I try to be a very joyful mood anytime I write. So, so I don't write, and then people start crying and all that. Start thinking. 
even though the greatest influence I had in music was uh, something they call Okoli Hakot White. Okay. Okoli yeah. Hakot White was, is your greatest influence in yeah. music. Okay. Yeah. Influenced me seriously. When I started composing, when I started listening to songs and how songs should be, I had him like he was my his music was my companion because I listened to it, I went through it, and all that. So it has very deep influence in me. I I connected well with his music. So a lot of songs wrote some we seen some Hakot White's uh, feel in it. Not intentional. I didn't do that intentionally. I just write and it, I'll, I'll hear it later that something something like something like that. So people can be impressed by a lot of things. This song was written. This song, the language is Igbo, and I'm not Igbo. What I did was I listened to how it was spoken. They after sending the, the words to me, I, I I requested for an audio for somebody to speak the words when you speak it out for me, and I was guided by that because I wouldn't want any tonal inflection. I needed to sound like the tribe and all that. So. That's how it came out. That's the history, the little history behind okay. that song. That's a very moving, you know, history. Sorry again about the loss of your sister. And it's interesting that you said people, you conducted the first ever performance of the work. Yes. And you said people were coming up to you and talking about how sad um, it sounded and perhaps the, the, the pattern of the music, the, the way it made them feel. In, in fact, the version we just listened to, to be fair, was it's quite moving and quite somber. And you said you then went to a, a professor um, yeah. who then told you that, yes, the mood of a composer can influence what they produce. And you also talked about how you've been influenced by Ikoli Harcourt White, a, um, a composer as well. I believe he's a Nigerian, was a Nigerian yeah. composer, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yes. Um, so, and that you now try to make sure that your mood is in a certain state, <laughs> you compose, so that you don't compose sad, um, sorrowful songs. But listen, we, we, are, we are human beings, we are what we are, and we must, you know, do what is necessary. When we go through certain things so you know well done a beautiful composition very well performed as well yeah. um and you did mention that you the song was composed in the igbira language which you said yeah. is it you don't speak it or it's not I your don't. language it's not so, my language and i don't speak it so you got the, te the text for the piece and then you also looked for somebody who could speak the language to send you an audio recording of how it should yes. sound so that you, there were no mistakes in the pronunciations. That's really interesting because there is a piece I want to play later. Um, it is it's titled Yabo, but we'll look okay. at that <laughs> because of what you said. Now we'll we, we talk about that. Um, because there are some, we had an interview last week with a very interesting another African composer who talked about the importance of you know the way words are used in, in music compositions. And sometimes if you write a song in a particular way and you, he used the example of water. You know, he said okay. some people compose and they use the word water, for example, and because they don't take care around the pronunciations of certain words, they just pick water as an example. He said you might write water instead of water. You yeah, know, that so was what I said. That was what I said earlier about tonal inflection. When 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 you listen to it from somebody who speaks the language, you know the ups and the downs of the language okay. before okay. you can use your another meaning entirely. Okay. Well, our languages in Nigeria are very very tonal. So if you use it wrongly, it can mean something else o outside what you intend for it to mean. So you need to know how to go the up, the stress, the, how it goes up and how it comes down. So you use it accurately and correctly. A lot of musicians, a lot of music composers make that mistake. But then I'm happy people are learning fast, learning to write following the normal stress pattern of the song and avoiding now inflections. Avoiding okay, wrong tonal, tonal um issues with tonality and sounds yeah. of words and how they should sound. Okay, let's just quickly breeze through this next question because we are approaching our 30 minute mark. However, there is a slight chance that we are going to go beyond 30 minutes today. I try to <laughs> I try to I recognize how um the cost of data can be challenging, you know, for some of us. So I try to keep the interview to 30 minutes. Uh especially those who want to watch the videos later or people that you know are watching it live. But I think we have quite a few things to talk about. So I really hope that our audience can be, you know, can push their 
can uh, stay supportive of us, let's put it that way. I just hope that they can get the resources that they need, you know, to also follow through on the interview. I will try to upload the audio alone as well, just the audio of the interview, so that maybe it will be cheaper and a lighter file for them to download and listen to or listen to. So I'd really try, I'm respectful of the fact that these things cost a lot of money for people who yeah. want to buy or watch later. Uh, but I, I and I appreciate their support, and I hope that we, we continue to get support from them and that they get the resources that they need. Um, and I'm going to be accused now of taking up too much time. <laughs> so, question: Did you? You've given us a very good history of how you know the journey into music. Yes. Did you study music composition in that music course that you did. I didn't. I didn't get that. Did, did I you study music composition? Hello. Can you see that again? You know, you did a music course. Was that called yes. music composition? Yes, performance and music composition. Okay, um, good. So we breeze through that one very quickly because of time. You said you are from Kogi State in Nigeria. Mm. Are you influenced? You've talked about Ikoli Hakot, why it's been a great influence, a significant influence. Are you influenced by the culture of your state? Are you influenced by your tribe? patterns of music what does that does that contribute in any way to your music composition style sadly no i'm trying to do that now i'm trying to do that sadly no i was not influenced by my culture because i was born outside my place and all my life i've lived elsewhere can now, i just interject very quickly because i was supposed to put that as a caveat in the question i'm just trying to rush through because okay, okay, okay. i was going to point out that by the way in in a country like you and i also happen to be a nigerian so i think i can speak from my own experience when somebody says that they are from x state nobody should make the assumption that it means that they were born in that state and they've lived yeah. all of their lives there good so that's it's true, not the same some parts yeah. of the world people say i'm from y state it means they were born there or something you know something along those lines but for us it's rather different so let me let yeah. you continue yeah I, I i was i was i was not born there at all i'm from there but i was not born there at all and i didn't i never lived there until i had to go back you know for some things so i had to go back to to perfect the knowledge of the language you know but it didn't it didn't influence my writings my compositions at all but then i have written in my language because I have knowledge of the language, so I've written songs in my language. But then the culture, my the culture of where I come from and the life and the tradition and all that, didn't have much influence in my life in my writings. So sadly, no. Yeah. Currently, no. Currently, no. Not sadly, to be fair, <laughs> but currently, like, no. I, <laughs> some some people. My, my 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 father my dad once told me these things you do all around the country and all that where would you do it for your, your for, for the place you are coming from like you know he asked that and i told him i am already on it i'm already doing a song i'm doing a series of seminars and all that there so I, I i've trained several choirs there it's just that my music the style and everything was not influenced by you know, that culture okay okay yeah. Um, we are going to go into, we're going to listen to Yabo now. Um, Yabo is another composition by our our um, guest composer of today. This composition, this performance is conducted by a well-known Nigerian composer, uh, Jude Osiwanko. So everybody let you know, enjoy this performance of Yabo by our guest.
That was Yabo, Yabo yeah. by our guest composer, Abel Obaje. Thank you very much for everyone who is watching and for sticking with us up till now. Very interesting. That's a very interesting, beautiful composition. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. A number of things come out of that composition, especially if, if we are talking to someone who is knowledgeable about the um, And I, I will try and touch on this later. Africa, Africa countries as an outsider and what I have observed from the way who are not Africans look at Africa. Let's take Nigeria to be precise. But yeah. yeah, some things come out of that composition, that performance. Did you include the flute in that performance or was that added? Yes. Yeah, no, no, I included it. Everything, everything. The song was well interpreted actually. I included the flutes at the point in the song and uh, it was done the way it should be done. La do me, la me do la, like that. And, and it was um, what the original, what I wrote about the original instrument we played was a god, a calabash. The very premier performance, the very first performance, they used a calabash, they played the calabash, ah. and the flutes. But then I heard something like the maracas also in, in this one. But then it was a calabash that was used. Calabash, okay. Yes, okay. calabash. It's so peculiar with the, the culture of, of, of France. Yes. Yeah. The stick, the stick upside yeah. down. Sometimes on top of water. Exactly. Now you 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 seem to know that very well. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's <laughs> talk about it. Today. Fantastic. Okay. So that, that was what was used. That was what was used. And okay. then the, 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 the flute was to bring that that feel. If you hear it, you understand. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was that, that was the intent. Okay. For 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 what it's 
my um, for, for what it was, I speak the Hausa language. Okay. My, uh, yeah. As a son to a military officer, you move around Nigeria. You okay. Go, you were catapulted once to the north, uh, Kebi State. Kebi State, okay. Kebi State. Then I also went to Sokoto State for my NYSC. So you served in Sokoto State. Sorry, when yes, we say no. NYSC, this is a program yeah, run in Nigeria for university graduates, higher education graduates who they who are sent to different parts of Nigeria to do what they call serve. Yeah, it's, um, it's almost year. like it's a, it's a paramilitary system that is run, and they serve for about a year. So somebody yeah. in the north can be sent south to go and serve. Exactly. Yeah. So I did that in to a state. university, to a school, to a company. They spend time yeah. there, so it's help with integration among other things. Okay. So that was I. I, I perfected my English. <laughs> Sorry, my house speaking uh, talents there, and then I learned their culture. I got into them very very well. I learned a lot about them, and I see. Very, very rich artistic things there that, that, that I could use. I've written quite a number of songs because in house that yes, I'm privileged to speak the language, like I know the language, so I won't need anybody to read it out for me. That okay. I already I know the language and everything. Okay. Um, I am not going to get this pronunciation right, or it's not going to be correct because I've already played the and I'm going to, unfortunately, I think pronounce it correctly instead of incorrectly. But there was a part where they were saying Zomu Yabi Yesu. It wow. didn't sound like that. So I'm, I'm, you've talked about tonal inflection. Yes. I'm wondering if you cannot perfectly actually present certain pronunciations using music. Because the pronunciation of that, Zomu Yabi Yesu, come let us praise Jesus, is, is what it interprets as. Sorry, I speak a bit of house as well. Yes, um, yeah. But when I listen to that part, I think it's where the three ladies were singing at the, in the middle of the choir. They came forward to sing. I think it's from there. Something yeah. about it was a bit odd. But okay. then, are you sure that we can ever reach true perfection of interpreting certain kinds of languages using music? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you can actually, if, well, if you are conscious, if you are very conscious of the fact that this is what I want to achieve, and I want it to sound 100%. Some of the things, some, some, some of the um, side distractions that we hear that may not be on top of the pronunciation as it should be are there, but then they will not mean something else in that language. Okay, Maybe good. Okay, probably, brilliant. Probably to complement a specific uh, melody. Okay. okay. Without doing any damage. To, okay. Uh, brilliant, so, brilliant. That, that, that's <laughs> Nice okay, like that. that addresses it because funny enough, even when I heard that, I didn't think, oh, I didn't flinch and say, oh, no, that's not correct. You know, yeah. it didn't sound as you say, it, it's not as if it's an aberration, an insult oh, yeah. to the language. It doesn't have another meaning when you listen to it. Okay, there is something I really wanted to avoid, but I think I will mention it as well. And I think that's the first thing that got the crowd excited when they said, I, <laughs> I don't want to say this, when they said, I love you, they were talking okay. to Jesus. You know, we are, we are, we know what we are talking about. In certain languages in Nigeria, there are intonation peculiar or special, unique in, intonations. The way people pronounce words. I think this particular choir was asked to pronounce this the word love, the phrase "I love you" in a particular way because you could see the crowd reacting when they said "I love you" instead yes. of "I love you." That was what I wrote. So, <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. Was, I wrote so, I, then I wrote L O B E. -E. Then you, it was for a festival, too, and you know, okay. so when they say, I love you, everybody shouted at the laughing. Yes. <laughs> Actually, and I, people are expecting that from a particular part of the country. But unfortunately, the world, um, again, like I said, I talked about this earlier, the world outside of Africa, Africa, each continent, each people have certain things that are unique to them. But I've come to discover when, I, when you sit in the Western world, you start to identify certain things. And the way the cultures are going nowadays is if you do things like that, some people will describe that as an insult. They don't recognize that this is recognized. This is normal. Yeah, yeah, this is known. Yeah, yeah. They will say, oh, you are stereotyping the Hausa man. Oh. Now, I, I don't see it as that. I grew up in that part of the country. You talked about spending time in the North as well. Yeah, I heard that. And I thought, oh my goodness, they put in a lot of effort to get that sound right. I didn't even yeah, know you wrote yeah. it. You wrote Everything it into the world. 
Yeah, and then in that part of the country too, I know of people who, people from there, who make fun and who joke with things like that to their people and they laugh about it, comedies and all that and all that. So I understand that clearly. I also understand, as you rightly said, that some people will not will not take it. Some people will say you're insulting our language and all that and all that. But then I was very conscious of the fact that these people are people who, you know, you can they, they, they make fun of themselves. It's just like another part of the country, uh, Benue State, the thief, the thief man, they have a way of speaking to, and they have performers, comedians, who the only thing they do is to speak and mimic and to laugh at the esoteric but to laugh at the, 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 the tribe, make fun, and people who speak that language also laugh and then laugh. Brilliant. Okay. So it's the ability to laugh at yourself. But in this case, this is basically trying to present it as it occurs in that part of the country. It's not a mockery, it's reality. Fantastic. It's reality. Um, now we are talking about the outside world and Africa and how we are looked at. I want to also talk about what I have observed again, sitting in a Western country, how difference is perceived i don't know if it is a modern thing or if it is a cultural thing anybody watching that video um who is a nigerian will notice something notice the way the conductor is dressed notice yes. the way the performers are dressed if you are from a lazy mindset where everything must be one and zero and everybody must fit into a box they will say why is the conductor dressed as an Igbo man if you are if you have that kind of lazy or from the east you know something like that. But that piece is a northern piece. And I think, I don't know how much you as a composer and other composers are aware of how much ambassadorial work you are doing for your country, for the continent, how you are presenting a united front that, listen, a composer can be from the north, compose a yes. song in the east, the conductor can be from the west, the choir can dress as, just as if they're from the south. And this is yeah. what we work with. Talk about the unity and the unifying power of music. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. The, the, I understand clearly why that was like that too, because um, the conductor, Jim Wanko, a very uh, good friend of mine, he actually spoke with me before performing, doing the song. And then I, I saw that there were a series of uh, performances, you know. After this, they didn't go down, they did another song, you know. So there were several songs on stage. And one of the songs was Igbo, the way he was dressed, another Hausa and another uh, Yoruba. Probably they had no time, or maybe they could go change, come back, go change, come back. And because we are trying to project the country as a united uh, in one front, that it's okay. We we as long as we are portraying the culture of Nigeria, we are fine with it. We don't have issues, you know. People people intermarry, they do things together. Yoruba marries this and all that and all that. So my mind i don't have issues with those things you know some people may have issues i don't have at all as far as we are first of all human beings before wherever we come so i i absolutely understand clearly and i don't have any problem with that at all Fantastic. So, if you're performing for um a specific culture maybe you are going to perform for these people the, the, the target the audience are uh, directly from this place you can choose to mix the put the three languages you can choose to go one way and all, all the other it's not a problem good okay i mean I, I know i'm nodding along and agreeing with you but it's because of my own personal experience i have discovered that there are parts of the world where again i don't know if it's historical or if it's more recent it's a, a recent thing you seem to be expected to fit into a box and when you don't fit into a box people get confused um and this is what what this video has shown just from a single performance is what we if you are a Nigerian, grew up with, you grew up with a country where everybody did everything else. People dress as each other. They, they just copy each other and each I other's culture. I, I have different uh, tires for different Funny enough, I don't even have that for my own. <laughs> you don't have attires from your own culture, but you have attires from different parts of the world. Okay, yeah. yes. Yeah, so this is what we are used to because if you, I don't want to bring in um, political noise, if I can put it that way, from the world stage. But we hear things now about cultural appropriation. Oh, you copied my culture. And, and there is no clarity anymore on what people are angry about. Is it that I copied your culture and presented it as my own, or I did not acknowledge that it was your culture? But let's leave all of that because it can get quite noisy and murky. I want to quickly talk about one more um, thing um, before we conclude. 
I, I started this project, African Composers, because I recognized some gaps online, maybe not face-to-face, -face, but online, that there is an almost, um, there's almost no recognition of the, the number of African composers that Africa actually has and has produced. If you go online and Google African composers, the impression you get is that we have very few. Now, do you think, and I've, I've identified three reasons why this is the case. So that we need to put in some effort. Those who are performing works of African composers must put in some effort to identify more instead of repeating the same people's works every time and presenting them as the only ones. Do you think that enough African composers recognize that this is going on, that they are famous within their countries across Africa? Do they recognize that Africa is not the only global platform? There are seven global platforms. If you look at seven continents, you know, are they putting enough effort to turn spread the message beyond sadly, sadly no we thank people like you who are trying to seriously project people project our composers project us out now sadly no the typical african composer is contented unfortunately is contented with his immediate environment and then you'll be right for just a purpose like if you have an event here or you have something and they say right for this you just right and you are okay we don't see that as being too good. Some of us have realized that it's time we we are not doing away with the Western uh, music and all, but it's time we have a good blend. And it's time they also see us for who we are and accept good enough some of us, some of our uh, writers and all that. But then the, the typical African composer see himself or herself as somebody who should just write for a specific event occasion and then if he goes out if he doesn't you know so i think i encourage i encourage everybody i encourage all writers all composers who know the arts because i know that the people who just pick up their pen and write, even do yeah let me not go there let me not stand too hey, but Tom, you know you know that your, your part of your history almost <laughs> contains people just picking up the pen and writing something yeah, yeah, just, just, so people just see somebody this person is famous because of his right of let me go and do that you don't know it's not like that when when, when i so, sometimes people get inspired by things sometimes i sit down i sit down with the intent i want to write now i can stay for an hour or two and nothing comes to me and i'll just drop the pen and move so it's not not that you just get up and you're almost right i'm right that's why they give you projects to do and they take six months to write a song yeah because they need it to come out well so I encourage the average African writer, African composer, to sit up now, sit up right, because we have people like you who, although I was just there, I didn't even know how you got to know me and all that and all that. People like you trying to project and to make a statement about Africans, Africa, the composers in Africa, the composers in Nigeria and all that. Let them seize opportunities like this. Let them take advantage of things like this and see how we project ourselves very well. Because if we don't do it, People just be looking at us, nobody will do it for us. So it's a total encouragement to everybody and total appreciation for people like you. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for that kind feedback. On that, you know, rather in very interesting note and the encouraging note from you, I we will draw the interview to a close. It's been brilliant talking to you, um, Abel Obaje. We've learned quite a lot about you. I said from this to you the other day that the aim of these interviews is to record history. So the tagline <laughs> I'm putting forward is African composer interviews, recording history, you know, getting history right was going to be the first tagline, but I thought, you know, <laughs> let's just make, let's keep recording history. So, so that, you know, I, I'm trying to reduce these, um, not accusations, these claims that I've heard over some years that Africans don't have anything recorded. We don't know much about them. The history is not written down. It was passed down from parents to children, you know, verbally. Well, now it's written down. There are not going to be any claims that, oh, we don't know about this particular composer. So it's been brilliant talking to you. Thank you to everyone who's joined in live and see some of the comments. Um, thank you any, to anyone who will watch this later as well. I really appreciate it. We go on for about an hour, but we had to, it's quite an interesting, interesting conversation. And I did appeal to you to please, you know, um, stick with us, continue to support us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Abel. And we wish you, you know, the best with your future endeavors and hope to speak to you in future as time goes on. Thank you. Thank you I truly appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.